Hi guys, welcome back to the podcast and another episode of Real Talk with Ree. Today we are talking about autism specifically because that is my experience. I have four children with autism. But this can apply to any sort of additional need disability and it's a question I get so much. The question is, what do I do when people just do not get it? People in my life, in my children's lives, do not understand what we're dealing with. How do I cope with that? And we're going to try and unpack some of that today. So full context, if we've not met, hi, I'm Re. Um, my main channel, Mummy of 4UK, is sort of content describing how I best try and organise my life and stay on top of things with four children. But a lot of the content that I make over there um, does end up touching upon autism. So there are videos over there on that channel. There's a whole playlist with the, what we went through to get the children diagnosed. And I think if you are a parent of children with additional needs, you'll appreciate that that was a bit of a journey. And I think that's the case for a lot of people. But part of the journey is really dealing with other people's opinions and they can be so so varied so if you're right at the beginning of this journey before we get into how to deal with people that just don't get it we're going to chat very quickly about some different types of uh, issues shall we say that you may encounter with people in your life and how you can perhaps prepare yourself a little bit for these issues so that you're not going to be quite so blindsided when you don't see them coming so um, some things that have, some of these things have been said to me, some of these things I've come across and a lot of them have been sent in by multiple people who have said, I'm dealing with this issue, what do I do? So I think the first one is when you get people going, um, when you've tried to explain perhaps to friends or family members, this especially happened to us when we were trying to explain to older family members that um, our first child to go through the assessment process was uh, being assessed for autism and they were like well there's nothing wrong with him there doesn't look like there's anything wrong with him and it's this very snap judgment snap kind of comment and it can make you as a parent who's dealing with often behind the scenes often the people that might be saying this comment don't witness the struggles that you face perhaps you mask a little bit perhaps you shield the rest of the family from what you're going through but we definitely had this oh there's nothing wrong with them there's no and I think part of this kind of very quick it's often like the first thing that people say especially older people and I think part of it is lack of of wanting to accept that there might be anything wrong I'm using inverted commas there with their their grandchild their you know this child in their life and it can just come from this place of not wanting them to come across any difficulties at all. So having autism does not mean there is something wrong with you. It just means that your brain is wired in a slightly different way to a neuro neurotypical person. If you're neurotypical, it's wired, wired one way. You're neurodivergent, it's wired another way. It's like UK plug sockets, American plug sockets. They're not, they're just, they're just different types of plug sockets, you know? So it doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It's just for one device to communicate with a plug socket in a different country it needs like a little bit of help a little bit of adapting so for neurotypical people to understand neurodiverse people sometimes there is that just that difference in the way in which we communicate so I think that initially this comes from a massive lack of understanding but also not from a hurtful place it often comes from a place of just Especially if it's like grandparents, I think people experience this a lot with grandparents not wanting to accept there's anything wrong with their grandchildren. And it just comes from a place of we don't want our children or our grandchildren or anyone to struggle with anything ever. I mean, if I could pick and design my children's lives, they would face no struggles ever. They would never be bullied. No one would ever be mean to them. They would uh, never get a parking ticket as they're older. They would never have a heartbroken. They would never struggle with anything. Nothing. They'd get the job they wanted, they'd have a happy, cushy lives. In reality, we are going to face different challenges and struggles in our lives. And I think when you get a diagnosis of something like autism or ADHD or a physical anything, any form of diagnosis, it's just identifying that this is something that that individual is going to struggle with. Now, not having a diagnosis doesn't mean that that person's life is going to be free of all struggle. 
It's just that it's not been identified what that struggle might be. And the person that is being told that this child or whoever is going through this assessment and may have autism or maybe you're telling them after the assessment you're saying they have got autism, it's kind of like what you go through as a parent where you just don't want anything to ever affect your child and they're kind of processing that in their own way. Perhaps not in a very helpful way to you, but that's mostly what they're doing. Um, Another difficulty you may struggle with is when you're dealing with people that you are looking for to help support your request for your child to get assessed. So you might get difficulties with school, for example, or childcare or wherever, saying, oh, well, we're not seeing any of these difficulties that you're describing, so we can't support your request for assessment. That can be so challenging because masking is such a massive thing, especially in girls. Um, So that is a challenge that you may face saying, well, we can't see anything wrong with them. We can't see any of these challenges. We can't see any of this behavior you're describing. But I know my children will mask and mask and mask in school and then save it all up for me at home at their safe space. So I think the, the thing to remember here is that you do not absolutely have to have the support of the school or whoever you're seeking that support from in order to get your child assessed. I know that my, certainly two out of my four children were not displaying any difficulties in school or very, not say no difficulties at all, very, very few difficulties. One of them, they didn't see any difficulties. The other one saw very few difficulties in school and they still had an assessment and they were diagnosed. So it's not necessary. It is helpful, but it is not necessary. Um, another difficulty you may find, and we are going to get to, if you keep keep listening, keep tuned in, we are going to get to how we can kind of deal with these difficulties. But uh, just, I think it's important to prepare yourself for things that you might face as you're going through this process, because it can be an emotional roller coaster. Um, and some, one of the things that you might deal with is, is, certainly around the time where you're actually having your child assessed is you might get too many questions and it might be quite overwhelming Um, and my piece of advice for this is quite simple so and this can apply to lots of different situations where you know it's quite overwhelming if you know that you're going in and you're getting your child assessed that particular day or you know you're getting the results of a particular day then you're going to feel quite overwhelmed whether your child is diagnosed is not diagnosed because it's the end of a big fight it's a big big process it's a big in-depth thing that's happened to you and it's going to feel like a bit of an emotional roller coaster and you're going to probably if you've got lovely friends and family that care about you you're going to have messages and phone calls saying how did it go how did it go and it's all very well meaning but it can feel very overwhelming to have to respond to all of those things so my advice in this situation and this is what I have done in the past and I've I've given this advice to other people and they've said it's been very helpful is to write one message and to then copy and paste it to anyone that that um, gets in contact with you. So if, for example, your child um, has just received a diagnosis, you can say in the text message, um, thanks so much for thinking of me, you know, thanks so much for, for getting in touch, I really appreciate you thinking of me. Um, in brief, what happened, so-and-so was diagnosed with bleh or was not diagnosed with bleh or was offered an assessment or they refused to assess or whatever, just in short. And then you can sort of round it off with, um, I'm feeling really quite overwhelmed now, so I'm going to switch my phone off for the rest of the day and chill, spend time with my children, whatever, and we'll talk soon. So you're kind of thanking them for what for their interest, for their support, for their well-meaning vibes, giving them enough information to answer their question but without engaging in a back and forth and back and forth and having to explain it over and over and over because I actually find when you have been through these quite overwhelming situations having to explain something over and over and over is really really challenging um so another challenge that I I don't know if I have dealt with this because perhaps I have distanced myself as I've got older I've got better at doing that from people that are less than supportive um but some People have written in to me and said that sometimes they've found that since their child has been diagnosed, they've had other people who have distanced themselves from them. And I wonder if this is just um, a little bit of not knowing what to say or how to deal with the situation. Um, So like I said, I don't think I've really experienced much of this, but I have, as I've got older, stepped back from certain friends myself 
that have been less than supportive when I've been in, in a certain situation. I think I've got a small circle of close friends now that I really feel like they're there for me and I'm there for them. Um, and I've got a lot of people that I am sort of acquaintance friends with and I'm a little um, a little more discerning with who is in my kind of close circle now and who I really chat to about. So that's a, that's a total different aside, but I wonder if that's why I haven't experienced that as much. Anyway, back to the question hand and people who are distancing themselves. I think we have to look at a little bit of understanding about why this might be happening. I think sometimes when people are really going through something, they've been through a bereavement or something very challenging and people just don't know what to say. They end up saying nothing. And I've heard people talk about this a lot when they have been through a bereavement or a very challenging time in their lives and they feel like a lot of people have distanced themselves. And I think it's just people don't know what to say, so they say nothing. They they steer clear, they cross the road, they, they move away from that person because they don't want to say the wrong thing. And I think this can come from a well-meaning place. I don't want to say the wrong thing, so I'm going to say nothing. But then I think people in that difficult situation can take it as feeling quite abandoned. So I think by realizing where people are coming from, that can feel less hurtful. But we are going to get on to um, to, to some things we can do to help. Um, another couple of things we're going to go through that we hear. And uh, do let me know, if you're watching on YouTube, by the way, do let me know in the comments some challenging things that you've dealt with from other people since you or your child have been diagnosed with autism or, or something similar um, and some challenges you've had in people in your life just not understanding. So something that, uh, that somebody will say, um, people gen tend to generalize. So they're like, oh, autism. That means that they're like, super talented at certain things you know like they've seen the film rain man incidentally i don't think i've seen that film <laughs> i should probably watch it they've seen the film and they think that that's what autism is or they've met one person with autism and that's what they think autism is whereas it's such a spectrum it's such a varied thing autism is, autism is such an umbrella term that something that one person struggles with another person may not like my children for example my little three especially, don't really struggle generally. It does have, they do struggle sometimes, but with very loud noises. I think it's because they live in such a noisy house and they're so used to there being so much noise. Anyway, it's not something they struggle with a lot. Um, one of my children sometimes needs ear defenders in certain situations, but generally it's not something they struggle with. Whereas some people with autism find that overwhelming noises to be the biggest challenge. So that's just one example of just how different people with autism can be. And I think it can be a huge challenge when people in your life have met one person with autism and think that's what it is. I mean, I was guilty of this to some degree before I understood more about it. So uh, when I was growing up, um, my um, I knew someone that worked as a teaching assistant with someone with, with autism. And this, this child was nonverbal and... Um, really needed one-to-one -one constantly around the clock. And that's what I thought autism was because I was a teenager and that was the only person I'd ever come across with autism. So that's what I thought it was, which is why then when um, I had a child that displayed autism traits, but there was nothing like that. It took me a while to realize what it was. And I think this is, ignorance is the wrong word because it, it sounds like it's malicious and on purpose. Just lack of education, um, which is why I do talk about it so much because I feel like by just discussing um, my experience with autism and my family's experience with it, educates everyone a little bit more. And I'm I'm not saying that that you should just listen to me because you should actually listen to just you know a lots of different opinions and perspectives because my perspective is just my perspective. But if more people share what's going on and share their understanding of autism, I do believe that the world will be a better place for my children because more people will have understanding and acceptance and that will ultimately make their lives easier. So that's ultimately why I talk about it more. And um, I talk about it because I wish younger me had heard some of this stuff. And I talk about it because I do think it will help. So solutions. The first one is empathy. Because generally people saying all these things, oh, there's nothing wrong with your child. Or, oh, I don't see anything. Or just saying really unhelpful things, not being supportive and just not getting it, not understanding the struggle. Oh, because, oh, I forgot, I forgot another one, actually. We're all a little bit on the spectrum. 
I think um, that's something that all special needs parents have heard. And then actually they thought, well, actually, I, I don't think you understand the struggles we're dealing with behind closed doors. Anyway, by saying all these things, oh, we're little, oh, well, we're all on the spectrum. Oh, it's just, just not understanding what you're going through. It's generally because the person saying these things doesn't understand. They may not wish to understand. They may really want to be helpful, to have that empathy, but they just don't get it yet because they've not come across that information. They've not been put in that situation where they've been forced to learn and understand this information. And some people are going to want to educate themselves and some people are not going to want to educate themselves and are just not going to care. And it's your problem, it's not their problem. And I think something you're going to have to come to terms with is you can't control whether someone wishes to educate themselves or not. And that's a bit of a challenging thing to accept. But by accepting it, it is going to make your life easier. It really, really is. So if I think back to myself thinking that's what autism was, if that's all the information that I'd had, then I can think of all those times that someone has said, oh, doesn't seem to do anything wrong with him or or whatever it might be. And I can remember how I felt and thought, oh, this is so unhelpful or making me think like it's all in my head or whatever. But then I can also see it from their point of view that they'd ne- never come across it before. And maybe they thought autism just meant nonverbal. And this child that clearly talks, I thought that's what autism was. So clearly it can't be autism. And it's just a lack of education. And maybe they'll get there. Maybe they'll educate themselves. Maybe they have no desire to. Which brings me to the next point, which is, If someone is um, interested in supporting you and by learning more so that they can support you, and even if it's not in a physical way, even if it's just in a chatting way, in a being able to use language that is helpful kind of way, being able to um, understand what you're going through, then ask them if you can send them some things to look at. And I do not mean like encyclopedia sized books, although some people may wish to have reading recommendations. I mean, um short digestible content so reels tiktoks things like that that you find relatable that you find when you come across something that really sums up what you're going through save it so that when someone has you know is asking for that that information you can forward it to them videos longer form videos but still videos are quite easy to digest aren't they articles perhaps if they are really quite digestible. You don't want to have to ask someone to do a complete course on something. You want to send them something digestible and easy. You can recommend certain content creators or YouTube channels or playlists. Um, Like I try and organize all my content specifically over on my main channel into specific playlists. So if someone's looking for an answer on something, they can go through it in a playlist. They can press play and it'll just keep playing. So send people playlists. I will put some of mine if you find that helpful um, down below so you can forward that to someone but just find something that makes sense to you when you come across things online that really resonate with you save them you don't have to immediately forward them to people without you know (laughs) in an unsolicited way but when you've got friends or family members that are ready for that information that want to support you want to learn more you've got some stuff you can send them Um, so the other thing to do is to build up a community of people that do get it so This might be curating your friendship groups so that um, you are supported by people that really are there to support you. So I have got um, a small circle of really close friends that I just am so grateful for, some of which have children with additional needs, some of which do not. But all of those people, I feel like I support them and they support me and I'm really grateful for that. If you have got people that get it because they've been through it, then that is very helpful because they will have had all of these things said to them. All these things that people are saying to you, all these struggles, they will have heard them too. And being able to speak to someone that has also been through it is so, so helpful. And if you have not got a community of people in real life, then you absolutely, online people can be part of that community. So maybe it is in sort of watching content where you think, yes, I get it. Other people are going through it too. I'm not mad. It's not all in my head. I'm not the only one struggling with this. And that can be so helpful just to hear someone else talking about their experience. So 
Uh, sound off in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. I don't think you can comment on podcasts, can you, when you're actually in someone's ears. But if you're on my uh, podcast YouTube channel, and if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, by the way, please, please do. Um, it helps me to grow this podcast channel. Um, you can head over to my main Mummy of 4 UK channel as well as lots of additional content, more like video, video content than just chatty podcast stuff over there as well. But make sure you subscribe to the podcast channel for lots more chats like this. But what was I even saying? <laughs> um, yeah, make sure that um, you sound off in the comments with your experiences because I want this to be a community where we can support each other. Maybe we don't have people in our real lives that get it, but we can we can support each other here and and that can be just as valuable that's what I was saying. Um, <coughs> uh, the next point um, can be really challenging and that's just accepting that really other people's pe opinions don't matter. It can be challenging when you actually need people's help, like the school or whatever, um, but there are always other people you can go to, people you can take things to and complain to. And, and that does bring up a challenge of its own and that's probably something to discuss on a different day. But when people don't understand and you don't actually need anything from them because... It, you know, that you don't need their signature on a form to get an assessment or whatever. You just need them to be understanding because it would make you feel better. I think ultimately you've got to accept that you can't force people to learn something they have no desire to learn, to, to educate themselves when they have no desire to educate themselves. And going head to head with them and trying to force them to understand is never going to get you anywhere it's like very much you can take a horse to water but you can't make a drink just if you can accept that not everyone's going to get it but that doesn't matter because as long as you get it you can support your child that is all that matters it's a very difficult pill to swallow very difficult lesson to learn but you will ultimately feel better in the long run and um, you can't force people to understand and your struggles are your struggles whether people acknowledge those or not so even if people are like oh can't see anything wrong with them or oh yes my kids have meltdowns too when you know full well a meltdown is different to a tantrum and you're talking about different things it can be easy to feel like your experiences have been belittled it can be easy to feel like oh gosh it's all is this all in my head am I the only one seeing this here but just know that your experiences are your experiences and other people not getting it does not invalidate them it does not make them any less real and you are not the only one feeling like this other parents of special needs children experience this every day too and I hope that understanding that helps in a really small way um ultimately you've got to do what's best for your you and your family to put your needs and the needs of your children front and center so if someone is being especially unhelpful and really impacting your mental health and your ability to cope because they are being so unhelpful and so unsupportive it is absolutely 100% okay to step back from that person to emotionally distance yourself from them that little bit so that you can have that mental headspace to be strong because ultimately being a parent's tough enough as it is and when you do have additional challenges then that's going to just bring some additional pressure to some degree so I hope that when you do hear some of these things said to you, which unfortunately you probably will as an additional needs parent over the course of your parenting journey, I hope that you can remember uh, everyone gets this said to them. It does not make it helpful that it is said to them, but by acknowledging it's just something that people who are not yet educated say to people going through these things. It's something that all people going through these things will hear from some angle, from somewhere you can remain kind of steadfast and thinking, okay, this doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean what I'm, my struggle isn't real. It doesn't mean I'm making a fuss. It doesn't mean that my experience is invalid. It just means that sadly, it's something that is said to people. And by sometimes by realizing that, I think personally anyway, I can feel like it doesn't make it as weighty. Does that make sense? So by knowing, okay, this is not helpful. It's not helpful that this person doesn't understand, but I can't force this person to understand. And everyone in my situation will have dealt with people that don't understand. It doesn't make the situation any less real or less valid. So I hope, I hope that that helps in some way. Um, thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Real Talk with Ree. Do let me know down in the comments if there are any more specific topics like this you would like me to cover. 
about autism or, or anything else for that matter on the podcast. And please, please do share your experiences with challenges you have found with understanding or lack of understanding from people in your life share those down in the comments and support each other because that is how we we get through these things guys that by supporting each other people that do get it that have got that understanding if we can support each other it makes it that little bit easier when we don't receive the support from people in our real lives so thanks so much tune in again next week for another episode don't forget to like subscribe do all those youtubey things if you're on youtube rate and review if you're listening on the podcast and i shall see you next week for another episode. Oh.